Hello. <coughs> Hello, good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome. Welcome to Kayaking for Autism's channel. <coughs> Today, um, I'm going to show you a little bit of behind the scenes, a little sneak peek of uh, how I work and everything. And maybe you can criticise me and say, oh, I'm a, I'm a rubbish modeler, and you can say, oh my god, you didn't just do that, I can't believe you did that. Uh, but nevertheless, this is the biodome in its... Um, <coughs> in its uh, raw format. This is in Blender file. And um, yes, it's taken me a lot of work to do all of this, but as you see, it's all one part. And yes, it's multiple node collider, and yes, you can fit an engine inside the part without it meeting a node collider, thanks to this, um, which is the uh, engine room. It was originally where uh, <coughs> you started off, but I decided that because everyone was saying, oh, I don't like you having a, a massive engine right at the bottom here, <coughs> We need to have an internal one, so I did it. Um, so today I'm going to be, um, I'm basically going to be looking at uh, how I can uh, just basically improve it, and I'm going to show you how I've been uh, shaving off the polygons. Okay, so what, what I did is before all of these, um, all of these different rings were separate objects, and I merged them together, and I uh, basically cut their polygon polygon count down a bit. And um, <coughs> if you can see here, this here is one of the windows, and um, and as you can see, it doesn't quite mesh with the roof. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just change that now for now. So we'll um, use B, and we'll select all of them. And then you hit the Z key, which makes you see 3D mode. If you press G for grab, and Z for the Z axis, it pulls it up. Or Z for the Z axis, if you're American. <coughs> yes. Um, anyway, grab X, G for X, and G for Y. And then what you want to do is just try and make sure that they're as, as basically as close together as possible. Um, it doesn't matter if they're not perfect. And there we go. Grab X. Grab Y. Okay. That'll probably do. Now at which point you then uh, go back to object mode. And here's what you do to try and make them reduce polygon count. You select that one. Oops. Not that one. And you select this one. Oops. Control Z if you've done something bad. Oops. Did it again. Oops, did it again. There's so many parts in this, it's very easy to click the wrong thing, I've noticed. Um, but yeah, when you're dealing with something that's very, very big, optimization and making sure that you don't repeatedly put um, ten more polygons than you should do uh, is very important. So we've got this one and this one, object mode, and you just say join. So now they're the same object. Okay. And I'm going to go that one and that one. I'm going to say merge at first. That one and that one. Uh, ding, ding merge at first. And where was it again? Uh, it was that one, that one, that one and that one. Merge at first. And that one and that one. Merge at first or something like that. Yeah, there we go. So we've um, we've joined that together nicely. So then we've basically reduced the number of polygons as much as possible. But we can still reduce even more. I mean, you see things like this one. As long as it doesn't affect the uh, large one. Because if I merge, um, I'll show you just quickly. If I say merge at first, that thing stretches out, and that's not good. Okay, but if I do that one and then that one, and I say merge at last, you can see I haven't really lost much in the way of detail. But at the same time, I've saved a few polygons. And you know, when you're, you might think, oh well, it's a couple of polygons. So what? We've got big graphics cards. But the thing is, when you're dealing with uh, not just ten polygons, but you're doing ten times, I don't know, maybe a hundred of these, it adds up to quite a lot. And um, I've been going file export collada.dae. And I've been going, where is it? Uh, biodome. Biodome. At the moment it's 21.1 .1 meg. Okay. And if I go file export, I fucking hate phones. Why do I have to be wrong at this time? Collada.dae. And by, to biodome, still 21.1 .1 meg. Um, yeah. I'm going to show you again what happens in Kerbal when I export that. So we say export Collada. Export Collada. Right. File save. And then we, go, we can probably now go into Kerbal. So we'll close Kerbal down. Okay, escape, end flight, end flight, uh, space center, back, quit, yes, quit. Okay, and where were we, Blender? Okay, so we're still here. Um, <clears throat> now that we've done that, I'll show you what happens in Kerbal, because it's going to take about, when you first compile this, it's going to take about, I don't know, five minutes to actually compile once uh, I've done some changes. So I'll call you back once it's, once I've loaded the game and it's hanged on Biodome for yonks and yonks and yonks and then finally it gets into the game even on my quad core. Back.
Okay, we're back. We've um, <coughs> spent donkey's yonks um, preparing the game, you know, like basically hanging about the loading screen with Biodome for about five minutes because the first time a giant flyable level enters the game, it sort of has to compile all the meshes. The second time it loads is much quicker. I mean, it takes about 28 seconds to load the second time around. Oh, look, we've got a, <coughs> a space kraken. Uh, yes, I think this uh, ship is completely cursed <laughs> from the get-go, but, uh, um, okay, well, um, not quite sure what we're supposed to do with that, but anyway, let's just quickly test the doors, do they still work and everything? Outer Autobot door, inner Autobot door, yeah, all our doors are working fine, cool. Um, basically, what I showed you then was basically I just moved like a few polygons just so that I could try and finish a bit of work on the dome and you can see how it's a painstaking process. You know, it takes a long time just to do one little thing. So that means that when I'm in Blender I try and do about 20 things, then do, then change it. And a lot of that does take a lot of, lot of thinking ahead. Now if you're new, new to modelling and you do 20 things and you're not that good, um, it's quite easy to make a mistake and you won't know where it is and then your entire model is corrupted and you won't be able to do anything at all. Um, especially if you forget to add a uh, a texture, apply add a texture to one of your models. Yeah, that can just cause it just to hang, or um, you know, silly little things like that. So I generally try and just copy paste as much as possible, and then just try and modify that prefabricated object once I've got it working. I mean, everyone's gone through test cube, haven't they? They've all gone through uh, extruding that first test cube, and oh wow, I've got a model, and then they realised, oh, you can't have that no collider, oh, you can't have a convex no collider, what's that all about? Ah, but you sort of can if you have about 600 of them. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I think I managed to cut the no collider count down to about 500 with this particular one, and um, I'm doing a number of things, and I, th I thought that uh, maybe instead of having about a million different faces for every single one of these uh, little, um, you know, things that you walk on, I was thinking maybe just do one big texture. I mean, one of the things I, I did that saved a lot of memory was uh, this corridor here. It's, it's not perfect, but basically that there is actually just one bitmap image, but it's at the same time, it's just one face. And I noticed that the thing that's causing the chug isn't so much bitmaps, it's number of polygons, okay? And before that, it's also number of parts, because number of parts is going to be the chuggiest thing. So the fewer parts you've got in your ship, the less chuggy it's going to be. And there's going to be a sort of a limit of number of polygons as well, and number of vertices. Um, yeah, there are a few little touches up I want to do, like there's a little gap in that door there, and there's a little gap in the wall there, and the oxygen room, oh my god, look, they look like pentagonal pentagonal cylinders, but no, oh well. And um, I'm sick of seeing that same stupid dissected frog video <laughs> picture anyway, I want to see something a bit cooler. Um, yeah, uh, <coughs> people have suggested an elevator shaft. Now, I'm think I've had some serious thoughts about that actually, and I think it very much is doable as long as you're willing to be careful with where where it goes up, where it goes down. Uh, but I'm just trying to think about you know whereabouts in the base I should try and put it, and I'm trying to think. Uh, well, wouldn't it make make sense to have the lift as close to the um, you know both of the docking bays as possible? So I was thinking maybe about here, maybe there would be a good place to make a cut, and then sort of not do a long tube down here and make it go all the way down to ground floor if you want. Um, I really want to start thinking about something similar to that corridor I showed you, where I just want to have one very high resolution section of the map that's a sort of high res texture. Because right now this sort of this beige colour looks all right as a sort of a an organic floor, but it looks a bit barren. I mean, things I've done to try and sort of like make it look a bit better was just like the, like this carpet here. I mean, you know, you've got the barren floor, but then when you're in the uh, colonial quarters bit, you've got um, you know a table and a carpet, everyone for everyone to sit down and chill out and have a cup of tea. Uh, <sighs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of what I've done is, I've, I mean, the reason why you say, why haven't you done much to it? Why is there not so much improvement? Because the problem is, I've, I've sort of reached a number of barriers, basically, where basically, uh, as you see, some of the no colliders are just appearing for no valid reason whatsoever. I think the only person who would know why that's the case is Arthamon with his Mumek toggle, because as, as soon as I delete that, that one no collider, about three other no colliders suddenly start becoming, start appearing. It's a very strange bug. Um... <sighs> Yeah, hang on, I'm going to show you in Blender quickly how I do all the... Hello again, welcome back to Blender. I'm going to show you basically how you do all the corridors and all the ramps and everything. So we press Z. Now, because it's quite a complex level, it's worth working out with your 3D cursor. It's and just tapping the X, yeah? 
and then you can get your cursor like exactly where you want it to be. And I'm going to take you over to the uh, the bottom stairwell. So that'll be at zero, and the bottom stairwell inside the um, inside the ship. Okay, and we press Z. Here we are. Recognise this place? Yep. Yeah, so that's where the engine goes, where your command module used to be. The command module generally sits up here. Plenty of space for them on this deck. And you've got um, and you've got your ramp here. Now, how does the ramp actually work? When I was studying ramps and things, I had all sorts of problems. Oops, where, where did that go? Where are we? Here we are. Okay. Now, if I press Z again, you'll notice that this uh, ramp actually consists of six separate objects. Okay. So you have to have a night collider on the sides. Okay, to stop them falling off. Because if you just have a ramp, I found that it's so easy for the Kerbal to go up and then, oh, he's falling off. Oh, I'm going to have to go all the way back up again. And then instead of just having some plain no colliders, I tried to make them, uh, tried to make these uh, stairwells. And you can see, well, I'm not very happy with the stairwells at all. But you know what we can do is we can we can sort that out, can't we? So we'll go B, 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 B. All right, so D, D, B. B, B is uh, to basically drag a box around a number of endpoints. Okay. Do, do, do. Another thing I was thinking of, maybe I could um, save a lot of memory if I made these just plain triangles, sort of triangular cylinders rather than four-sided cylinders, you know, cuboids. And, um, you know, just simple things like that, just to so that it still looks just, it's pretty much the same. And then you go G for grab Z, and then that should um, solve that problem nicely. So let me go file, save, file, export collada DAE, and we go biodome, biodome. Okay, so you know, this is another little glitch that I just go over. Anyway, the other thing I want to tell you about with slopes is it's very important to try and make sure that they they mesh nicely with both of the node colliders you're going from and going to. Now, if you're smart, you can do this one, wherever it was, not no collider, the, um, the stairwell, and you can start doing little um, stairs. Okay, and if you're clever about where you place it, it will look like this kerbal is going up the stairs. It's just that that's loads of polygons just to do one staircase. And if I had to do that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times, my god, my poly count would be huge. So I just said, oh, what the hell, they slopes. And it's a drive round friendly place. In fact, I actually thought about um, getting one of Tosh's carts in here eventually. I mean, that was the whole purpose of this bay here. So that you can put about, I don't know, two or three moon, Muna tanks or whatever, dry them out, dry them back in again. One of the last little things I want to do is, I mean, I'm pretty much happy with the base. It's just that there's a little gap, basically, between here and the bottom. And I want to sort of do a sort of a, a flip-down ramp. And you, hopefully you'll see that in a couple of days. Um, other thing you've got to remember is to make sure that the corridors and the um, no colliders are pretty much well aligned. The doorways, there's no no collider. You can just walk straight through them. They're just um, there for effect. In fact, if anything, you could delete all of them if you wanted to. It's just that it wouldn't look as good. Um... This is one of the new, the newer ones, and I'll show you how it's done. Object, edit mode, and you go A, A, and here's my here's my little um, paste area. So I've got lots of different pictures, all in one 2048 by 2048 uh, image, and I sort of just select things like that. Now, this is one of my latest ones. Now, you saw the um, famous sort of like square thing with the little dots in it, which I thought was quite cool. But um, if you start repeating that face over and over again, like you have with, say, let me give you a really bad example uh, of, you know, <clears throat> when I was learning how to do this, like if I go that one, is it object mode, that one, and I go edit mode, you can see how this one has, uh, where is he? This one here has multiple, about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 different faces, okay? Now that's a lot of polygons, okay? And that's going to that's gonna eat up memory. So this, this unique corridor I did, object edit mode, I tried to minimise the number of polygons. So this one, even though it's got one big one for the wall, it's also got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more here. So it's actually got fewer polygons, but actually looks better. Edit texture paint. See there? So it's got that little radiator thing. I mean, you know, I could probably do with um, making that texture look a little bit better. So if we go that one there, and we say that face, ding. Okay, and we say where is it? What was it you project from view? You project from view. Rotate. That's it. Scale him down. Go for grab. Rotate. Scale. Do do do. Grab. Scale him up a bit, maybe. Go for grab. And then finally, if you see that little point there that's not doing so well, you can just go grab Y, and he comes down like that. Okay. 
Now if we have another look at texture paint, we can have a look at see how, how that's improved a bit. Where is he? Um, object mode. Uh, texture paint. There we go. Uh, <coughs> okay, it looks like it's upside down now. So all we can do with that is we can say edit mode because it's kind of a bit hard to sort of see where. Um, oops, edit object mode. No, oops, edit mode. That one. Ding. Just that one. We say uh, rough rotate. Ding. 180 degrees. That's good. Go for grab. We scale X a bit. Go for grab. So it doesn't matter that bit of the bottoms there because a little bit will stick through the ground. Because if you want to try and make all your walls look nice, try and stick them through the ground a little bit so that there's the sort of gap between the, the floor and the uh, ceiling of the next one, um, but not so much that it uh, sticks all the way through. That's that's really the trick to it. Uh, let me give you an example. Like uh, if I go, um, <coughs> if I go grab Z, that's the wrong place now. So if it sticks through, it's really bad. So you want to just sort of like move it so it's just not visible like that. Bam. Okay, and we go back to texture paint again. Ah, see, that's looking much better now because you can just about see the bottom of the um, the bottom of the uh, uh, thingy bob, the um, the wall. So we go back to that one again, and we go back to select the point, grab, grab X, maybe about there, and go back to texture paint. And that's looking much better now. You can see all of the little uh, faces and everything. In fact, I'm, I'm much happier with that. I might just delete some of the other faces now and replace that. And um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just basically a question of when, once you've reached that 25 meg limit, or if you've got a slur computer, maybe it's only a 15 meg limit. And uh, you have to think, well, okay, that may be 25 meg, and I've got a 2 gig graphics card. What's the problem with that? But the thing is, you have to render all of these triangles something like 24 frames a second, 60 frames a second, or something ridiculous. Okay, and... A Kerbal's got this um, draw distance as a flight sim, so it's very, very far away in the distance. Whereas, you know, games like Quake or whatever, there'll be bits of the levels that just aren't in memory at all if you're there. Whereas with Kerbal, if it's within two kilometres, everything gets rendered. Okay? There doesn't seem to be a sort of a, if it's less than this, if it's greater than that, render it, but don't render it if it's this one. There's, it's not, it's basically greater than or less than. It's, there doesn't seem to be any sort of um, dual function. Like, you won't say, I'll draw something in the distance and I'll only draw something ten feet away of me. It says draw everything under two kilometres, basically. <coughs> and obviously, when you get farther and farther away from the planet, the planet turns out to be just a uh, just a sort of a fake fake sphere, because it would be impossible to like model an entire planet um, for every single polygon of every single bit of terrain, wouldn't it? So they just replace it with something else. And similar with the biodome. I mean, say you're in one of the corridors. I'd love it if some of the bits in the background just get replaced by some sort of like pet texture of um, Kerbin or texture of whatever planet you're on so that it saves a lot of memory, so then you can have more detail actually inside the complex. But that's really coding. I mean, I'm working, basic, I'm stretching Unity to its limits here, and uh, I'm still doing a lot more work on it. Anyway, um, thanks very much for watching. Please give me some ideas on tips, techniques, what you'd like to see, how you think I can improve the biodome. I mean, everyone says texturing, 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 but I don't know. I mean, what, what can I really do to make it textured a bit better? I mean, when I've done the uh, outer shell, which was, uh, has taken me a long, long time, and we go, where is it, texture paint? I mean, to get it as looking as gorgeous as that has taken a long time. And I think a lot of people are really criticising the texturing on the inside of the um, or inside of the base, which is really far, far, far from finished. I mean, I want to be doing things like schools, hospitals, labs, you name it. I mean, I want this to be an actual, you know, livable city and that, like, like, people could grow up, be born, die here, and live a perfectly happy life for 70 years on another world. I mean, that, that's the ultimate aim here. It's because, okay, we might be able to go to these other worlds, but how do we sort of um, make them more homely, more cushy, more, um, basically a bit more legroom than...